Hello, what is up everyone? This is Warren from the Rhapsody Piano Studio. I want to welcome you to today's lesson. We will be practicing and learning Katie's Dance. And this is from Martha Mears Jazz Rag and Blues Collection. This is book four, excellent teaching material, excellent learning material for the student. This is gonna be for late, intermediate, slash early advanced. I don't think you're gonna be able to find a single version of this. It's kind of a shame, they, they should be releasing these, uh, you know, like Faber and Martin Mayer. I wish they would release, you know, single versions because people love this and they would like to just do one song at a time, maybe instead of the whole book. But the whole book is awesome regardless, so you're gonna wanna pick it up anyway. Plus, if you understand the stuff that I'm teaching you in this lesson, you're gonna be able to apply it to any of the videos, any of the songs that you're already learning. Check the cards after the live stream is over. There will be links to the sheet music you need to pick up the sheet music and also a video tutorial okay uh if you understand the stuff i'm teaching you in here then you you can just watch the tutorial and figure it out yourself like seriously test it out test out your knowledge that you're gaining from these piano lessons hopefully okay and last but not least before we start make sure you subscribe hit that subscribe button smash it if you haven't done so already and also if you want to be able to catch when i go live uh make sure you hit that notification bell as well Okay, and plus you'll be able to see, I mean, you're gonna see my uh, daily piano tutorials regardless. Okay, right. uh, hey, what's up, FM, FM family? What's going on, man? Thanks for joining me today. If you have any questions about what we're practicing, would love to help you out. Okay, so uh, what you typically do is we're just gonna pick one small section at a time, it's just simple practice, practice basics, and then maybe I'll teach some more advanced stuff as we go along. So what you wanna do is just pick the first small section and when I look at it, it just looks like it's from the beginning to measure five. Could be wrong. Let me play it through. Yeah, I, I like that division. So we're just going to take the first four measures to measure five. Now, uh, anytime you have chords like this, I think it's good to just kind of play everything at once. So you can hear the melodic changes. From here, it's actually not just going down, like a half step. See that? Then it's just a matter of getting the rhythm. By the way, there is a swing rhythm to this. If you don't know what swing is, it's this. Okay, all right, and then measure three. We have a little melody. This right here, you might take some time practicing. No pedal. Connecting. Nice, nice legato. See that? And then from measure four. And then going down. Another half step. Yeah, so it's good to kind of take this time out to explain it. And if you understand this, you actually don't need to practice it as much. All right. Let me show you one more time. We're just going to take both hands here because just chords, all right? The beginning to uh, measure five. Okay, now you can try that with me. And uh, this is where we're gonna get into some more advanced concepts here. Uh, when you're practicing, when you're doing this, you actually don't need to do a lot of repetitions. You can, you can literally just try it with me one time right now and whether or not it goes good or not, just wait a little bit before going back and trying it again. Uh, obviously in this lesson, we're gonna keep moving forward, but you know, uh, that's where those tutorials come in, right? All right, so try with me together. Beginning to measure five. Ready, go. All right, and then, you know, if it didn't go so well, like I was saying before, just wait a little while, okay? Uh, this is a simple example will illustrate this point. Instead of doing it five times in a row, it's better to space it out in your practice sessions, like five times throughout your sessions, okay? And I'll give you just a basic rule of thumb. If it's difficult, don't wait too long. If it gets easier, just start to wait a little longer, okay? All right, here's the next part. From measure five, we're gonna take it from the pickup. Let's check out the harmonic changes from five to eight now. 
So they're going down, like the first section. Going up here. It's still the same melody, actually. Look at it. It's just inverted. It's cool, right? Then here. This melody again. This pattern. I don't know if you want to use a four. I think you can get away with using a four. Or just five, three. Because you can use a little pedal there to connect, so you can go from third to third if you want. Three to three. Make sure you hear all the changes, okay? Let me show you again. Okay, let me show you one more time now. together and then once again remember even one repetition is all that's necessary at this point like literally it just gives you uh, like a starting off point okay whether it's good bad or whatever you just you know you know where you stand now okay all right let's try this together pick up to measure five ready go <laughs> We have one part, we have another part, and we're just gonna call this process small chunking, chunking, checking, small chunking. If you, uh, the, the typical example I give to my students, if you, if you think of every song or every piece you learn as a pizza, you're just going slice by slice, okay? So we have two slices so far, all the way to measure eight. However, before we go on, you gotta do something with these two slices. Take a few seconds to think about it. What is the answer? We gotta put these sections together now. We're gonna small chunk into bigger chunks. Okay, now from the beginning, all the way to measure 8, and let me show you the harmonic changes again. Kind of a little, little blueprint there. Okay, now let me, sh let me play it for you now. Try this together. Ready, go. Okay, now keep it going from measure nine. Let's keep going. Okay, so it's basically. Okay, so let me show you this again. to kind of get into the harmonics I mean my I'm telling you my I'm, I'm kind of training this myself I'm way behind on this stuff <laughs> with like harmonization and playing by ear like you know if you figure this out I mean it makes it easier to learn because you can just hear where it's going for one thing other thing too if you are interested in, in, in improvising then you kind of need to know this stuff okay because look I, I'm not good at improvising but when I know the harmony I can improvise place to do hands separate okay and then uh, be thinking about that as well places where you want to try hands together and places where it would be a better idea to just do one hand at a time you know sometimes simple simplification is good sometimes you don't want to simplify all right this is measure nine okay try 
uh, together very slowly. Ready, go. Okay, now, one note I do want to point out on the grace note. Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, if you want to find out if a, if a person is really good at piano, Okay. And then I know that's very general, but just think, you know, someone who's talented, someone who's a good, good musician. What are you listening for? Okay, that's how you, I'm not listening for all the fancy stuff. I'm listening to how do they play this grace note. Make it as music as possible, or do they just do... Because that, you know, a musician will definitely make this a very important point. Okay, so... You take a lot of slow practice there to make it sound good. Okay, anyway. So that was the only point I wanted to make. Alright, now let me show you left hand. It does have octaves going up. And now seventh, seventh chords. Yeah, so basic pattern. Octaves. Now seventh. And that's it. Now we just play it normally. Try that together now. Ready, go. Okay, now back to both hands. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try it again. Ready, go. Keep going, measure 13. Now, we're gonna finish off this song, this piece. Uh, we're about at the second page. There's only two pages, so this is a good short little ditty to learn too. Now, I just wanna ask you guys, if you have learned something from this video, if it's been helping you out, go ahead and hit that like button. Let me know that I'm doing my job okay. Uh, I mean, job, I say job, but this is my passion for sure, okay? Uh, if you like this video, if, I'm, if you enjoy it, helps me out a lot help me to help you guys and also if you know anyone who would love to play something like this on piano would appreciate it if you shared it with them as well i'm sure they would appreciate it too okay let's go on from measure 13. okay and then we're gonna stop at 17. i'm gonna show you in the right hand now we have triplet pattern another one here Another triplet here. And make sure you're working on the god. Look, I'm gonna play this without any pedal whatsoever. This is kind of hard to pull off. I actually would use pedal here. But even I can do that without um uh, without any pedal. In any case, uh, yeah, I always think it's a good pedal, uh, good pedal, good idea to practice without pedal. Here we go, 13 to 17, right hand, ready, go. Another grace note. Okay, now left hand here, 13, more octaves, now here, it's like a resolution. Two five one progression. Do you hear that? Cool, right? Anyway. Anyway, so wanted to point that out in case you want to get your harmonic analysis in order. Two five one. Very typical progression in jazz as well. All right, left hand again. track now. Two, five, one. Okay, so let me show you again. Basic positions. 
a good, you know, another reason why you want to practice like this, doing the patterns, because you just practice the motion going from each position to position if you want to think of it that way. So if you kind of do it rapidly, it's a good, good way to get your muscle memory in order. together now measure 13 ready go okay back to both hands At this point, what would you do? Would you continue on? Because that is the wrong answer. We we're gonna go back and we're gonna join it together at measure nine because it's part of, you know, it actually starts from measure nine. You see the first time, if you look at measure 12, there's another way to think about it. What kind of feeling does that leave you with? Does it feel like we can end there? Because to me, it does not, all right? So it's still open. Oh, because look at the harmony. We're on a five. A five has to resolve to a one, okay? Now, where does it resolve to a one? Okay, there's where it closes. That's why, that's how you know that this is an open section. Same thing in the beginning, okay, by the way. Very, I mean, I mean it's just very basic stuff. Open, close, you know. Question, answer, uh, tension, resolution, okay? All right, now let me show you again. If you go back to measure 12, Finish at measure 15. You hear that? Okay. Hey, what is up? Rita Lebroman. Mm, sounds like a movie actor. All right. Actress, actor, whatever that is. Cool. Cool name we got there. Thanks for joining us today. All right. Now we're going to go back to measure nine. I will play for you one time. I'll do hand separate and then play it for you again. And by the way, you know, there's a reason I'm playing it first and we're actually not trying it together right away and I'm showing you hand separate and then trying again later on. Because also, a good idea too, and definitely give yourself more time when you're practicing on your own. When you're not watching this live, you just hit that pause button, okay? Is I'm playing for you first, because I just want you to listen. That's it. A lot of times when people are practicing piano, they don't focus on listening. The listening and studying aspect. So, I just play it for you one time so you can hear it. And you just kind of let yourself, like, you know, just, just let it breathe, is what I'm talking about. You don't want to just play right away all the time, okay? So there's a reason for that. And then I'm going back and showing you again. So you're listening to a repetitive time, like you're repeating the process over this entire section or this session, this practice session. And that's what you should be doing with the repetitions, how you're practicing it as well. You know, you try a little bit of this part, you go to another part, you go to another part, and then you're like, oh, maybe I want to go back to that part again. And again, going back to that original idea, like literally, just see if you can get away with trying each part only one time. And if you can do that and you can make progress, you are practicing the right way. Okay, here we go. Measure nine. Okay, I'm gonna go slowly now. Right hand. Actually, let me go a little faster. Now we're going to slow it down. Ready, go. Okay, left hand. Actually, if you want to see those positions again, those little... Uh, Seven. That's the octave. Then seventh to third, or also if you're doing harmon harmonic analysis again, two, five, one. Okay, now let me show you normally. Okay, 
also if you guys are still there listening to this video with you know if you if you want you know, be my guest would love to um it'd be cool to see where you guys are watching this video from at the moment what part of the world are you guys from all right if you guys are still there all right here's measure nine let's try it together left hand ready go question because it's just so fascinating to to me to hear like how you know <laughs> just piano is just so so loved across the globe all right here we go major nine ready back to both hands let's just try it together now ready go off this last section. Okay, once again going one, two, three, four measures. Okay, right hand. I mean, sorry, it's just doing this to this. Does that sound kind of familiar? Ah, look at the beginning. Sound familiar? Where is this from? Give yourself some time to think about it. Ah, go back to measure 11. Ha, okay, and then. Okay. Same harmonic progression, okay. Okay, let's try it together. Right hand, ready, go. left hand this is a pattern here going from a fifth to a sixth just the top note is going up and down back to octaves shortcut out of this section all right now let's try it normally left hand together ready go okay back to both hands Yes, this video is going to be up on the channel after the lesson is over. Of course, always uh, available online. Also, if you hit up my website, you can see uh, you, if you, you can get to a page where the videos are more uh, organized. I actually suggest that. That's why I created a website because it's easier to kind of see the categories and everything's in alphabetical order and whatnot. So definitely uh, check out the website after this video is over. And you'll find something at your level too, in case this is too hard or maybe not hard enough. I don't know. <laughs> All right, both hands again, measure uh, 17, here we go. Ready, go. Okay, next part. Ah, you hear that, so. analysis is good. You hear the harmony. Now what is this? Is this open? It is open, but it's not leading us back to the same idea. It's leading us to the end, obviously, if you're looking at the music. So, you know, some of these harmonies have a different function. Sometimes they are to come back to answer the original question. Sometimes it's to develop an idea further, okay? I hope I'm not losing you guys on this, but, you know. First one. Now back to right hand. Same pattern, triplets and chords. Stop 
off an F25. Okay, let's all the shadows together, right hand now. Ready, go. Back to left hand, same fifth, sixth pattern. I'm gonna turn it into a technical exercise. Anyway. Okay, shout it together. Ready, go. last section up we're actually not quite done yet but then after this uh, make sure you stick around for the recap uh, if you want some you know because this, this is a good, good idea to go over these ideas don't just watch it one time and then finish with it so you know I'm trying to help you guys out as well so make sure you don't have to go back and watch the entire video let's do a quick little recap at the end okay all right last part 25 to the end down right hand we're just going down sixths it's so hard to say sixths then resolving now here make sure you count that eighth beat it's an eighth beat okay if I tapped it My students have been playing on the beat. Not right. Okay. Little delay. Super subtle, you can miss it very easily. Yeah, let me play it once in time. And then on the beat, see if you can tell. Yeah, that one was on the beat. Okay. Back to right hand. Let's try it together. Ready, go. Super sweet. Okay. Left hand octave's going up. And then we have the sixth harmony, it sounds like. And then look at here. Two, five, one. Came back and we finished. A five six and then a one. You hear that? Cool, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay, let's try this together. Ready? Go. All right. Back to both hands. back to measure 17 actually because that's where this entire section begins uh, I mean technically 25 to the end what I just played for you is the ending so you can call it coda but uh, to me it's actually part of this last part so the you know so far all the sections that we've been working on have like an A and a B just one two okay two sections now if you look at this last one if you take it from measure 17 to the end we have three sessions sections okay and I'll go over that at the end of the lesson after I finish this up, okay? So, from 17 to the end. Okay, now show me right, I'll show you right hand, left hand, and same, same thing. And then we'll go over that recap at the end. Let me show you first. Okay, let's 
try it together now. This is measure 17, ready, go. Let's try it together. Ready, go. All right, now back to both hands. Let's just try it at the same time. And let's actually go one measure back and try it from the right hand in measure 16. So that's kind of where it starts. Okay, do it from there. Ready, go. Thanks for watching this video and here's a recap. We go back to the beginning, first section is one, two, eight. And then you're gonna divide that into two sections itself. So a half and a half, okay? So from one to five and then five to eight. The next section is from eight to 17 and then again, you can split that up. Last section is 17 to the end and here we have three sections. We have from 17 to, let me see, uh, 21, 21 to 25. And then 25 to the end is the coda, which is tied into that last section here, okay? So this last one's three different parts. Now, within three different parts, you can practice all these different types of ways. Like you can chord it out like I showed you, you know, for lack of a better word, when you can hear the progressions and the harmonics and stuff like that, which you should kind of be able to do at this point. Um, I mean, you can make the argument you should be able to do that if you're almost advanced, okay? But not everyone learns playing by ear and ear training and, and whatnot. So, uh, practicing that way, you can do hands separate, you can simplify, simplify it. And then also don't try to get everything perfect the first time because it's that idea of just doing one single repetition, doing something else, and coming back and trying it again. And then the rule of thumb is that if it's harder, you wanna wait less time, okay? If it's easier, you can wait a little bit longer. So there will actually be maybe days you don't even practice certain sections. You can even wait a single day in between gets more complicated than that. Uh, I honestly, I just use a software, it's called Anki, but you know, I can't, I can't explain it here, it will take forever. Um, so that's that. And let me see, I think that's about, I think that's about it. But in any case, um, of course, always practice with metronome. Make sure you hit up the, the links to, to try out these ideas on your own in the tutorials, okay? Um, yeah, it's, it's a good test for you. If you understand what you're doing in here in these lessons, then you're able to do it like in the videos and the tutorials. And to me, that's what it's all about as a teacher. You can trust me, this is something I do in real life, is when my, my students are actually able to learn the concepts in these lessons, kind of like what I'm doing here. And you should be able to apply it like in the tutorials, okay? Yeah, and if you're, and then honestly too, like I'm not trying to badmouth you. I'm not saying, if, if you think this way, don't, don't, don't think this way. All right, get, get out of it. Uh, if you are someone who needs those synthesia tutorials and need everything explained to you step by step by step by step by step, typically I wouldn't consider you a good student. A good student isn't someone who just expects to answer every step of the way. A good student, you have to have a good teacher to, to get this as well. I know it's a partnership, but if you're a good student, you're trying to learn this stuff on your own. You're not depending on me for answers. One thing I do with my students, and this will be over after this last rant, is uh, I ask a lot of questions, and that's something they definitely need to get used to right away. And you can tell how often they've been using their brain in real life, 
depending on like what they answer with the questions like oh i don't know or just like if they immediately the default or if they just blank out they don't even know how to think <laughs> that's a tragedy anyway uh that's it for today's lesson hope you guys enjoyed this video if there's a question that i did not answer for you guys and you would like it answered maybe i could show you in the next live stream maybe you have a request uh, but anyway, just hit me up in the comment section below. I read every single one of them. So would love to hear your thoughts. Okay. Thank you so much for joining me on this live stream. I really enjoyed uh, helping you guys with this one. I'll see you guys for the next one. And